Welcome to Lords of the Long Box. This is your man TiVo, and this is part three of the Mikey Sutton Spidey Scoop Jam in conjunction with our friends over at the Cosmic Wonder and Pete's Basement. I will leave links to parts one and two in the video description below. But as always, go make sure you sub up Cosmic Wonder and Pete's Basement for great content. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the great content that we put out there. I will summarize the other two parts here before I drop our scoop. And if you already saw the other two parts, I want to jump directly to our Lord's exclusive. There'll be a timestamp link in the description below that you can jump forward. But as always, we appreciate it if you just watch the whole thing. You know what I mean? So let's get right to it, boys and girls. Uh, the first part of this is about the Morbius trail. And if you haven't noticed, there was a small cameo at the very end, which kind of lit Twitter ablaze with is he or isn't he? Well, we're here to confirm Mikey reached out to his sources. Yes, that is indeed Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. The Vulture. The only reason why people were skeptical, maybe thinking it was just clickbait, if he is or isn't, is because a Sony film that's not called Spider-Man has rarely referenced its other counterparts from Spider-Man, like Venom, really not connected to the Spider-Man world at all, but this would be the first time that they've done it, which means that Sony and Marvel potentially reached a new deal. Well, but why didn't they use an image of Tom Holland as Spider-Man instead of the one with Tobey Maguire? Well, apparently that was a bridge too far from Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige. On a case-by-case -case basis, Sony can now make a connection to the MCU with their own Spider-Man affiliated productions, albeit in limited doses. So... Love it or leave it, Sony's solo adventures into the Spider-Man exist within the MCU. However, Marvel will not have to reference it in any fashion. This is similar to what Feige did with Marvel TV and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. regularly acknowledged the situations with their cinematic counterparts. There was even a sort of prologue to it in Age of Ultron, but not vice versa. If you remember, the only time really is most recently in Captain Marvel, where you we got to see an Agent Coulson kind of... Uh, I don't know, a prequel before he died. Oh, spoiler alert. But anyway, but as far as the MCU goes, Sony will only be able to touch and men mention Sony owned characters from the Spider-Man movies that Marvel makes, right? The Marvel Studios productions. Don't expect Morbius to interact and, you know, with the Avengers or any of those characters. So, and this is only the beginning. According to insiders of both Sony and Disney, the relationship between two companies is rock solid in the future of Spider-Man. They both want and need one another. A live-action Spider-Verse movie has Marvel Studios deeply interested, one that could have Holland meeting his amazing predecessors. It's still early, and the focus is on Spider-Man 3 for the moment. So what that means is they want to make a Spider-Man movie within the Spider-Verse where he meets the Tobey Maguire version and the Garfield version. How amazing would that be? Nevertheless, ideas are being floated about right now, and what are they? Marvel Studios has avoided using Gwen Stacy because of the commercial and critical disappointment that was Amazing Spider-Man 2, not to mention Spider-Man 3 with Dancing Peter Parker and the Venom. But Disney has a man crush on the character. She is incredibly popular, especially with the young girls. In fact, her massive following crosses over gender and age groups. Marvel Studios wants more than just Stacy to play a supporting role in the Spider-Man movies. They want to produce and release a Spider-Gwen film, live action, have it fully set in the MCU, teaming the characters with various young Avengers. No casting has begun for Stacy yet, but discussions for the project have just started. How's that? That's pretty amazing, or what? Now, let's get to the Lords of the Long Box exclusive. So, for those who've been watching the channel for a while, you probably this is not a surprise to you. So, let's get right to it, boys and girls. The Hulu horrors may have hit a setback, but Feige actually has larger plans for them. Even before Jeff Loeb left Marvel TV and the realignment of corporate structure, which made Feige the king of all the lands of Marvel, the greed lighting of the previous Hulu Future property, Blade into a feature film, opened the doors to a silver screen hell. So we reported on this channel months and months ago that Blade was originally planned for Hulu until Mahersha Ali called Kevin Feige and said, yo, I want to play Blade. What do you tell a two-time Oscar winner? No. So basically, that kind of scrapped everything and things have changed. Well, fast forward to now. Feige is developing Blade to create the Midnight Suns. That was initially leaked by us well, months ago and it was still aimed to be on Hulu. Joining Blade will be Moon Knight, Man-Thing, the Johnny Blaze, Johnny Blaze version of Ghost Rider, and Hellstrom who has a Hulu series of his own, but Sony MCU Kisses and Morbius has another goal. 
They want Morbius meeting Blade for a Midnight Suns film, which they do have a connection in the comics. Albeit not the first iteration, but in other iterations. There's been a, quite a few characters. Doctor Strange was also on that team of the Midnight Suns and World of Mine. I had a ton of other characters, but there's been different iterations of it. But the first one is Ghost Rider Volume 3, number 28, is the first appearance of the Midnight Suns. This will be dependent on how well Morbius does. No negotiations have commenced yet, but Morbius could possibly civil war his way into Midnight Suns against Mephisto and his demonic hordes, the Marvel Zombies. We have been talking about this for a while now with our friend, the Black Knight, who gave us this kind of long-term spec of what Marvel wanted to do with their horror properties. We talked about the Midnight Suns. We talked about Mephisto. We talked about Marvel Zombies, Man-Thing, Glyph, all these characters. And so with the small setback of Hulu not being able to do the horror things that they like, now Kevin Feige can do them, albeit maybe PG-13 for the big screen or maybe darker rated R things for Hulu. But either way, it looks like that's where they want to go. The Marvel sandbox is huge now and they could literally go to hell. So this is an exciting time to be a fan of the MCU and all the things that Kevin Feige has planned. What are you most excited about? Leave a comment below. And as always, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.